All right, and for number two, we have ooh, the Great Pyramid of Giza is the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Damn, that's pretty cool. When it was built 4,500 years ago, talk about being a boomer. The measurements of the pyramid were in royal Egyptian cubits, R-E-C. And so this is a form of measurement. So you know how there's the whole battle of like meter versus yard, right? Well, the real debate is meter versus yard versus rec. You know, that's what I'm saying. Anyways, point is, this is just a unit of measurement, okay? And so our good old friend Victor really likes pyramids. And he tells me that he reads online that one rec is equal to 0 0.52 meters rounded to two decimal places. So one rec is 0 0.52 meters around half a meter. By the way, this exercise is using a source of, from Wikipedia. So you know how your teachers always tell you, don't use Wikipedia, the IB uses Wikipedia. So I'm just saying everyone's a hypocrite nowadays. Anyways, for part A, we need to write down the upper and lower bounds of one REC in meters. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we really need to understand, well, what it means to talk about upper and lower bounds. And so technically, let's say we're talking about the upper and lower bounds of, dude, I don't know, man, like 150, okay? That means that if you estimate it from the lower side, you should reach 150. And if you estimate from the upper side, you should reach 150. And so, for example, you can have, uh, let's say you're rounding to the nearest 10th, right? So the lowest you can go on lower would be 145, right? So 145, because of the 5, you still round it up to 150. And for the upper, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, okay, for the upper, it would be 154. So rounding down with 154, you're going to reach the 150, right? And here, ladies and gentlemen, is where the interesting debate begins. And I'm going to tell you the stance that the IB has on it. I'm not sure if it's a general math rule, but the idea is the following. So for the upper one, yes, if it's 154, you round it to 150. But what if it's 154.1? Well, I mean, it's still pretty much four. It's not five, right? It's not five. So you're going to keep rounding it to 150. But now I'm going to really, really push it and say, okay, 4.9. Well, it's not five, so you don't worry about it, right? What if it's 4.9999999999? And here, I'm sure a lot of you will tell me, okay, so that's not five. So... I still round it down, and I say that I agree, but what does your calculator say? Your calculator says it's 155. Damn. And so the, your calculator is basically saying, dude, it's such a small difference, you might as well just call it 155, okay? And so strictly speaking, in the example I'm giving here, your lower is 145 and your upper is 155, okay? It's just, we first have to agree on that. I know it's a little bit weird because there's a five, oops. I know it's weird because there's a five on your upper. And this is just one of those things I got to tell you, deal with it, okay? We know that this is technically 154.99999, but for the answer key for how you should express it, just leave it as 155. Okay, so lower and upper is just going to be plus 5 and minus 5 of whatever you're looking for. And so if we are searching for, for part A, for the upper and lower bounds of 1 REC in meters, well, you know that 1 REC, according to Victor, who looked it up on Wikipedia, a 1 REC is 0 0.52 meters. And so how can you round from the lower side and also from the upper and still reach 0 0.52. From the lower side, well, you would do 0 
one five. And so because of this five, you would round it up to two, right? And so for the lower side, for the lower bound, you can already say that it's going to be 0 0.515. And for the upper bound, we're going to have the same debate that we just had, which is quite simply 0 0.524999999. But because the IV is what it is, and because the calculator tells you it is what it is, you're just going to write this as 0 0.525. All right? And so again, this has to do with that technically this is a 4 with a 9999999999 followed next to it. It is what it is. It's even what the mark scheme says. Just so you guys believe me, check it out. Upper bound 525, lower bound 515. Okay? And so I'm sure some of you looked at this and you were like, why is this not 4999? Technically it is. It's just how you have to answer it. I see upper bound and lower bound appear a lot in tests. So at least now you know how to answer it. Okay, so those are two easy points. You just got to be aware that it's plus five or minus five for upper and lower. Okay. Anyways, so yeah, upper bound, we're going to call it, as we saw in the answer key, 0 0.525. Don't forget your units, meters, and meters. All right. So that is for part A. Then for part B, we have that the Great Pyramid of Giza has a square base with side lengths of 440 REC and the height of 280 REC. Victor, our good old friend Victor, assumes that these two measurements are exact and that the Great Pyramid can be modeled as a square-based pyramid with smooth faces. All right. Uh, Victor's interested in some weird stuff, but everyone can do their own thing, right? Whatever. And so from here, we need to find the minimum possible volume of the pyramid in cubic meters. And here is a massive buzzword. Your massive buzzword is that they say minimum. And on the other hand, we have the equation for volume of pyramid. So another big buzzword is volume. So the moment you read volume, you should be digging into your formula booklet and seeing where the heck you have the words volume. And so once you've played around with your formula booklet for long enough, you're going to find that volume is, ah, it's in quite a few places. And here, which one are we looking for? Well, we're looking for volume of a da -da -da, square based pyramid. So volume of a square based pyramid. Here you have a right pyramid, right? And so the volume of a right pyramid means that it's straight up your pyramid, right? And so from here, a is the area of the base. But you know that the base is what shape? It's a square. And so, ah, okay. So the volume of a right pyramid is one third times big A times H. And big A is the square. And actually they say it's a square base, see? So that even helps, that even helps more, see? So side length 440 and height of 280. So that means you have your pyramid that looks a little bit like this. Let me practice my artistic skills for a second. So you have a square on the bottom, right? And then you have a pyramid that looks something like that, okay? And you know that its height, imagine that's the middle of the square. You know that the height is 280. And you know REC, right? And you know that the side length over here is 440. Okay, so you have 440, 440, and technically 440 here and here as well, right? That is what's happening, and all of these are in REC, right? Now, read carefully because the exercise, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but the exercise is asking you for leave it in cubic meters. So you're forced to turn it from RC, REC to meters, okay? And so, yes, my equation is one-third of big A times H, but if I write this in, right? If I write this in, you know that the volume is one-third. Big A is going to be the bottom part, right? So it's going to be 440 REC twice. 
because it's a square. Area of a square is base times height. Is that here, actually? Area of a square. It's probably not here. Now I'm just curious if it's here. Yeah, no, they don't have area of a square here. Oh, well, parallelogram, same idea. So base times height is going to give you the area of the square. And then we have h for height, right? And so h for height, we said is 280 REC. Now, you want to find this version, but in meters, right? And so to convert the 440 REC to meters, you're going to be taking this same 440, okay? I'm multiplying it by 0 0.515 for meters, right? And you're actually going to be doing this twice because it's the area of your square. All of this being multiplied by the height, which is 280, and in terms of meters, 0 0.515. So what are the main ideas here? The main ideas here are that you need to use the formula of a pyramid you need to find the area of the big shape at the bottom, which they tell you is a square, and you need to convert the REC into meters, okay? And which of the two are you using? Are you using the lower bound? Are you using the one in the middle? Are you using the upper bound? You're using the one in the lower bound because they specifically ask you to find the minimum possible value. And so for the minimum possible value, you have to use the smallest bound the lower bound. And so if you plug all of this into your calculator, you're going to end up with a very long line of math. But you go ahead and do that. And my first parenthesis is 440 times 0 0.515. Again, the same idea times 0 0.515. And this is getting multiplied by 280 times the height. I mean, sorry. The height being 280 times 0 0.515 to leave it in meters. And as we can see, we get this value here, which is 24, 68106.0516.051. All right. And so from there, we just found the volume of the pyramid in cubic meters. Make sure to not forget your units. You're going to be putting m to the power of 3. All right? If you want to do significant figures, you would count 1, 2, 3. Do you round it up or keep it the same? You round it up. You can leave it as 2, 4, 7. 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0 meters cubed. All right, so this is the version with three significant figures, if you want. And the thing it's, that's in green is what our calculator spit us out. All right. Anyways, that is for number two. Not that hard, but you do need to know well what they mean by upper and lower bounds. So once again, buzzwords are the way to go. I hope it helped. And that is for number two.